All right, so in this example, we're going to find the foci as well as the asymptotes. And just to have a little fun, I'll probably find most of everything. A lot of times when I get going, I just like to keep on solving and maybe even do a graph. I don't know. We'll see how much time we have. So let's go and take a look at this problem, um, or at least to be able to understand what exactly we're dealing with, because this is a hyperbola, not some weird parabola. All right. So the main thing that I want you to understand is when you're trying to identify the foci as well as the asymptotes is you need to know the standard form and the orientation of the hyperbola that you are going to be dealing with. Okay, so here is the standard form of a hyperbola when you have an x as what we call your leading term. Now, it's always a squared minus b squared, all right? But whenever your a squared is under the x, right? Because sometimes we swap the x and the y's in the numerator, that depends on the orientation. So this is what's really important. When your a is under the x, what that means is you have a horizontal transverse axis. I do not know what this hyperbola looks like yet, but what I do know is I have a horizontal transverse axis, so therefore, my hyperbola is going to look something like that, right? Now, again, remember, we're going to have a center. We're going to have foci. What we're looking for, I'm sorry, those are vertices. Here's your foci right over here. And then you're going to have some nice asymptotes going on here. All right, so we need to understand if we have a horizontal transverse axis from our center, which is HK, our foci are going to be going left and right. So let me just go and let's just label everything. So therefore, let, we're going to figure out everything anyways. Okay, so um, we have our center, HK, right? That's labeled right there. Our vertices are gonna be H plus or minus A comma K, right? Because again, we're going horizontal, right? So let like we say, well, what is our A? Well, that's the next step we're gonna wanna do anyways, right? Here we have this, right? So we can identify the center, that's kind of easy. Center is remember it's X minus H, right? X minus H, so X minus seven, that means my center here is seven comma five, right? Don't do negative seven, negative five. No, it's H and K is right there. Seven and five is right there. That's the formula, x minus h, x minus k. So seven, five is going to be your center. Now my a is just going to be, if a squared is equal to 16, then my a is equal to a four, my b is equal to a five. And they say, well, what about your c? c is part of my foci. How do you find your c? Well, the nice thing about hyperbolas is everybody kind of remembers this, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Like, hey, the Pythagorean theorem. And like, yeah, it, it basically is. Like, so I always just remember it that way hyperbola, Pythagorean theorem. Um, when you look at how it kind of works, you can see that relationship. But for right now, I just want to be like, all right, so to find c squared, that is going to be c squared is equal to a 16 plus a 25. Um, so therefore, that's going to be a 30. That's going to be a 41. So c squared equals 41. So c equals the square root of 41. Now, what is the square root of 41? If we were to graph this, you know, it's approximately six point something um, because six squared is 36 and seven squared is 49. So it's gonna be somewhere in between there, but I'll just leave this as the square root, square root of 41. Okay, so we have my center, right? And if I wanna be able to find, let's just find the vertices because that's easy. So the vertices is going to be seven plus four and minus four, right? So seven plus or minus four comma five. And again, we can just kind of simplify this for our teacher, right? That'd be 11 comma five, and that would be a three comma five. Then if we want to be able to find the foci, we're gonna do the same thing. Now this one, we're not gonna simplify for that teacher because I have a square root of 41. I can't really add or subtract the square root of 41, you know, without being approximating with the seven. So I'm just gonna leave that as a seven plus or minus square root of one comma one comma five, all right? And then last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be our asymptote. So the cool thing is once you know the equation of the asymptotes, right? Now, again, it is different if it's a horizontal transverse axis or a vertical transverse axis. The only difference is the A and B are swapped. But for a horizontal transverse axis, this is our formula. So again, we already found A, we already found B, we already found H, we already found K. It's literally just a plug and a chug. So we go ahead and take my B, five, don't do 25. So it's a five over my A, which is don't do 16. It's a four comma and X minus my H. So that's X minus seven. And then here's the weird one though, it's plus K, right? So a lot of times students will get this confused. A lot of times we write actually the formula as Y minus K. So they're like, oh, it's a negative five. But again, that's not a part of the formula. K is actually five. So it's gonna be a plus a five, all right? Now, again, I like to just kind of graph this. So I'm sorry, I'm gonna take a little bit extra take here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. I don't know why I'm going down. There you go has a horizontal transverse axis, and then five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. 
And then, what was that, three? So one, two, three. There you go. So you have something like that, something like that. Nobody really knows graphing this. You could simplify this to put this in a slope intercept form. But either way, guys, you're going to have two low lines that's going to look like this. And that is how you graph the parabola. But the main thing is, there is your foci and there is your asymptotes. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. And if it was, you're going to love the next video I have right here.